Hello everyone, I'm Ali Ibrahim Mio, and I'm really glad to be with you again in a new episode of The Pack, the series that discuss international issues every week. Today we would like to talk about the uh, recent catastrophe regarding the unintentionally downing of Ukrainian airplane by uh, Iranian military forces. And we would like to talk about the consequences and different aspects of this incident. We have today with us three respected guests. We have Mr. Manuel Oxenreiter. He is a political analyst and commentator from Germany. And also we have Mr. Tesha Teshanovic. He is also a political activist and analyst. And he's joining us from Serbia. And also we have Mr. Borna Danesh. He's also a political activist and commentator who is joining us from Iran. I would like to welcome all three of you to the program. It's a great honor to have you on this episode of The Fact. I would like to start with the first question, which is uh, basically one of the main questions that we have. I would like to ask Manuel, uh, how much do you think that this mistake uh, would, would basically affect the, the uh, recent news and success um, after re retaliation done by Iran against uh, you know, American bases. Do you think uh, this um, sad incident would affect all of those success? Um, two fields when it comes to this tragical incident. The first field is um, the military field. And the second field is the field of the public relations, the PR and the news coverage. So when it comes to the military field, these are things unfortunately and tragically happen in a war. Um, it were the Americans who invented even a term for what happened during the Vietnam War. They called that collateral damage. So, <laughs> So, uh, like uh, something not uh, really intended to happen, but unfortunately happens. So, on the military field, um, it is a tragical incident. Uh, Iran uh, apologized. Um, yeah, as far as I know, even the commander of the military unit which fired the rocket apologized personally um, to the relatives of the victims. So, that is what happened in the military field. What happens now in the field of public relations and uh, media is something totally else. So um, that is quite, let me call it a catastrophe for um, Iran and also for their reputation. Since um, what I can say, uh, the European mainstream media is uh, reporting about this incident in a way like Iran intentionally uh, destroyed or uh, downed the Ukrainian aeroplane. And that is something really serious. So we have, uh, for example, in Germany, uh, in my country, um, one of the biggest uh, yellow press uh, newspapers, uh, the Bild Zeitung, is right now non-stop doing uh, hate propaganda against Iran, um, saying that this was like... Uh, shocking strategy of the Iranian forces, uh, and so on and so on. So um, I think that um, that incident was really harmful for the Iranian um, state and for the Iranian um, uh, strategical position when it comes to sympathies. But um, on the other hand, we have also to see that Iran is a country which admitted and apologized uh, for what for what happened. And we have similar incidents also coming from the Americans. We shouldn't forget that in 1988, the Americans were downing or firing um, at an Iranian uh, civil airplane, um, the flight 655. And uh, as far as I know, there is until today no apology. Uh, there is no um, compensation for the relatives of the victims. And there is uh, nothing happened. So... Um, this is a thing which can be in the media field in longer term, not right now, but in longer term, even um, an advantage for Iran, if Iran is now handling this topic um, as honestly as they do it already now. 
Okay, thank you so very much, uh, Manuel, for the explanation. You mentioned uh, so many interesting points, uh, and uh, I would like to go into details about another aspect of this uh, catastrophe, as you uh, perfectly put it. Uh, I would like to ask Tesha about the reason uh, that the United States tried to push more uh, and also to provoke people in Iran against uh, the whole system in here. As you said, it was a mistake, and Iranian people are all sad and also very mad about this incident, but uh, the United States is trying to provoke people to protest against the government about uh, concerning this issue. So, Tasha, why is that? Why, uh, you know, uh, the United States will like to do that in such a situation that everyone is understanding the uh, catastrophic uh, you know, situation. Well, uh, currently there is a form of war between the United States and Iran, and it's not direct military confrontation, but it's some kind of a soft, uh, some kind of a soft conflict. And in that soft conflict, the goal of the United States is to create the new Middle East. Uh, as we have seen from the events in Iraq recently and from the events in Lebanon, uh, the Americans have mastered into uh, channeling the people's uh, genuine discontent with genuine issues that exist in those societies, and by those societies I mean Lebanon, Iraq, and Iran, into something that could be used for the uh, for the uh, goals of the American foreign policy. For example, there are genuine economic uh, concerns regarding the economic situation in all of those three countries, but the Americans have somehow uh, made it for all those three protests to become kind of an anti-Shia protest. In Lebanon, we had protesters that were chanting against Hezbollah, that part of the protests that were taken by the uh, supporters of these uh, Sunni factions and the uh, supporters of the Zionism and on the other hand in Iraq they uh, have even managed to get the Shia crowd to enter the and uh, damage the Iranian consulate and that way we see that their goal is to go against the only force that can challenge the American US imperialism in Middle East and that is Iran uh, why the Iranian Revolutionary Guard under attack? There is a simple reason for it. The Americans are afraid of the military might of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard. Let me go to this aspect of, of uh, you know, uh, the possible sabotage or sp uh, espionage on our uh, missile defense system. There are some rumors that, you know, these systems are being hacked or, you know, uh, infiltrated in, in some ways that actually ended up in uh, this incident. So do you think such a thing is basically uh, possible without our system or is totally out of question? No, um, I think again, again here we should divide or, or, or um, see two fields. So first field is indeed, uh, I think, for the United States of America, for Israel and um, even some entities within the European Union, there might be nothing more interesting than uh, the missile system of the Islamic Republic of Iran. I think that is very clear. And I think that uh, these things you mentioned in your question are um, quite maybe not happening right now, but um, that they seriously try to get into the system. Um, we have to take into account that we are doing today, uh, when it comes to a war, modern warfare. Modern warfare, that means um, we are not fighting anymore with swords and guns and um, uh, cannons. We are fighting with electronics, with um, information technology also. What is connected, of course, also to uh, missile systems, to nuclear power plants, um, from the civil to the military infrastructure. Um, that is quite possible, and that is um, the nature of intelligence, of intelligence service, to go into each other's uh, information systems. Um, but we should be now um, also realistic. 
since um, the government of Iran admitted that this was a human mistake and since we know that at the end of any information system is sitting a human who is, who is controlling it or at least who tries to control it, um, um, where humans are, there is human failure happening. So um, in my opinion, um, we can totally follow the line of the Iranian government and also of the commander of the of the rocket site, who, as I said already, who apologized personally to um, the relatives and victims or the relatives of the victims of the Ukrainian airplane, that um, this is a totally tragically incident, um, which happened by the confusion of the expectation of a US American uh, attack on Iran. And I think um, that is the explanation. What doesn't exclude, uh, on the other hand, that uh, those attempts of electronic and internet or, or informational uh, inf infiltration of the Iranian defense rocket systems is taking place right now while we talk here. Um, but I think in that uh, particular case we are now speaking about, the Iranian side took um, a courageous and honest stance and um, that is to respect, and that is also to value. Um, and uh, we should just hope that uh, also uh, the Ukrainian side and also the Western side will value um, that admission and the apology. Okay, thank you so very much, Manol. Okay, Borna, I would like to ask uh, about the the basic reason uh, behind these provocations uh, from United States concerning these, uh, you know, uh, protests in the in Iran after this incident, because as you know, Iranians are uh, heavily sad because of this catastrophe that happened regarding the downing, unintentionally downing of a Ukrainian plane. But uh, uh, after that, United States tried to provoke people to come in the, into the streets and, uh, you know, uh, protest against the government. What is the reason behind that and why, why do you think the United States would like to do such things? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, yes, uh, this last week, almost two weeks now, has been a, uh, it's been a very difficult situation. And as you said, uh, people uh, are extremely sad. Um, about the plane uh, crash, the plane being shot down, or whatever uh, that we want to call it, um, and you know, I've been out in the streets and I've seen people uh, from uh, all different types of people in society. Everybody is uh, very upset about it. Um, I think at this point. Um, Everybody should try to uh, make this a national, uh, try to make, make this another national unity, uh, or try to br uh, bring about another type of national uh, unity that was seen several weeks ago. Uh, I think it's very possible. I think if people see that uh, the administration in Iran is um, working diligently to make sure that this doesn't happen, why it happened. Uh, I think uh, this will stop protests and it's going to stop uh, anybody for try uh, from trying to take advantage uh, of this. Uh, it's going to stop, uh, uh, it's going to not let anybody take advantage of this. So if the administration, if the government uh, uh, is uh, clear with uh, the Iranian people, uh, I don't think that, uh, I think that people themselves uh, are going to not participate in protests and things like that. And it's also not going to allow foreign countries, now the United States or any other country, uh, to take advantage of the situation as we saw to me, it was, I just saw right now on the news, um, the ambassador of uh, England was uh, in the protest, which is strange. I don't know why he was in the protest. But um, uh, by, by the government having um, 
showing the people that uh, they are honest and they've uh, fixed the problems, I think it's going to stop any country from taking advantage of this extremely sad situation. Well, there is a concrete reason why the United States want to uh, do uh, create actions against the Iranian Revolutionary Guard. So far, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard has shown to be only capable, only force capable of truly undermining the U.S. the goals of U.S. imperialism and Zionism in the Middle East. Because ever since the uh, Islamic Revolution, uh, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard has developed means of asymmetric war warfare created in order to fight with the greater threat the American rep represent. What we have seen from the, pro from the lesson of protests in Lebanon and in Iraq can be also implemented in Iran. Uh, what happened is that the United States have used the genuine protests of the people of Lebanon in Iraq because of the genuine concerns and issues such as economic issue and corruption that exist in those societies in order to uh, uh, in order to help their own geopolitical goals uh, for example in Lebanon in the beginning it was a protest against corruption and against uh, the system that exists in those countries but now they create they, they made uh, that protest into the protest against the uh, Hezbollah and against the Shia and it, the similar thing has happened in Iraq where they have managed even to uh, create masses of Shia protesters that will protest against the Iranian influence in Iraq now that they are doing the same thing in Iran and the most important factor in these protests are the sanctions. The reason why those people have problems, the economic problems, are not the, the bad moves made by Ayatollah or the leadership of Iranian, of the Islamic Republic. It's because of the strangling sanctions that Trump imposed to Iran that are starving millions and millions of people. And those people, they are blinded and their anger is directed towards the Iranian Revolutionary Guard. The main issue here is about Israel. I Iranian Revolutionary Guard is a direct threat towards Israel and it's a direct threat towards Zionist interests. And those protesters that are attacking the uh, posters of Soleimani, that are uh, removing them from the Iranian streets, they are directly working for the Zionist interests and it's almost as if they were uh, hired by the IDF to do so. Okay, thank you so very much, Tasha, for the explanation. I would like to uh, go also to a comparison with, uh, with uh, another incident that also Manuel uh, somehow mentioned that. Uh, as you remember, in, in 1988, uh, an Iranian airplane was shot down by uh, American, you know, uh, missiles in the Persian Gulf, and uh, after that, there was no kind of uh, apology from the United States, and also even the the commander of uh, the uh, you know the, the the commander was responsible for that incident was also given a uh, you know medal of honor. So I would like to also compare it with this situation that we have in Iran, as you know. Our, uh, one of the main commanders in IRGC, uh, Mr. Uh, Hajizadeh, he has apologized himself about the um, unintentional downing of Ukrainian plane, and uh, he accepted the responsibility for that. I would like to understand the, the root of these differences of approach between Iran and the United States. Can you explain a bit about this? It's a very strange situation because I don't think that is what the West should hope for. They were hoping for the next like 10 months of media propaganda as Iran, of, against Iran, of accusing Iran that it downed aircraft, and by admitting that it downed aircraft, Iran has managed to overtrick all of them, and now they don't have any cards left in their pockets what they can do now. They can blame Iran that they downed the aircraft, that they ran already he admitted that it downed uh, by mistake. So that way Iran has prevented greater damage that it could be done to the international image of Iran. 
and when it comes to the downing of the Iranian Airbus in 1988, well, the moment that that happened was very specific. It happened at the moment where the American uh, power was at its height, and where no, there was the Soviet Union was collapsing. There was no one to challenge the United States back then. And they could do it at the moment. They could do it that way without any apology. I believe it. If it happened today, there would be more pressure from the free world to the United States to ad, at least admit that they made a mistake by downing a civil aircraft. But also the difference in approach is that uh, Iran, uh, by admitting that they made a mistake, show 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 it to the world that they mean well. And and besides, uh, in this tragedy. Iran is the biggest victim because most of the citizens uh, that were on that airplane were Iranian citizens, despite the fact that they had Canadian citizenship, that they had citizenship of other countries. All uh, like 90% of the people that were in the downed aircraft were of Iranian ethnic origin. So it was an unfortunate accident by, where as Emmanuel said, uh, by. A by making a collateral damage, I Iranian army has killed Iranian people. And it, first of all, is a tragedy of Iran. And all of these countries that are now criticizing Iran should give condolences to Iranian people for this tragedy. I hope that this uh, downing of the aircraft won't have uh, bad economic consequences in Iran. I hope that it won't, uh, uh, for example, um, create a situation where international airline companies would avoid uh, future uh, future air, air, airlines between, uh, for example, Iran and their own countries. Uh, but I think that this will be used for uh, continuation of the policies of Donald Trump. It will be used for, to economically isolate Iran and to cut all contacts that Iran has with the outside world. See, in my opinion, these are two different situations. Uh, the flight that was uh, shot down in 1988, uh, in my opinion, was shot down on purpose. And even if it wasn't shot down on purpose, um, it was a by giving a medal to the commander who shot down the plane, uh, I think the very very least they should have fired him see this is um uh it's it wasn't the same country it wasn't people uh, the people in iran uh, iran didn't shoot down an american plane if iran would have shot down an american plane uh, in a, an american passenger plane all hell would have broken loose okay the opposite happened uh the un didn't do anything about it and as you said in your question, not only that, they gave them the commander uh, of the American forces, they gave him a uh, medal of honor and uh, God knows what else. For all we know, they might have even given him a promotion. Um, but what happened here, uh, in my opinion, it's two different situations. Uh, it's extremely difficult to try to compare. Um, I think the root the root problem is that the foreign policy of the United States wants um, to control uh, all the countries in the world. It has not not necessarily now some of it some of the reasons might have to do with Iran having uh, natural resources, but I even think if Iran didn't have natural resources, they would still want to. Uh, control the country just as like as they do in uh, other parts of the world um, um, so um, I think that the root of uh, what happened in 1988 goes back to the hegemonic ways of the United States government and uh, it's it's at least two three hundred years old where uh, the countries like the United States want to control the United States government um, does not have a equal relationship with um, countries in the Middle East or countries in Africa 
they see their colonizers and they see them as uh, people that are colonized and they have to do what they tell them to do and if they don't do that well you see see uh, things like the Iraq war you see um, what you see uh, what happened in Libya uh, you see in 1953 in Iran uh, what happened to Mossadegh uh, whenever in Palestine there's an election held um, and the people that the United States government doesn't want wins the election well then democracy turns into something bad um, in 2009 when uh, all the polls in Iran had uh, President Ahmadinejad winning and he won in a democratic elections with candidates uh, who um, were from all four candidates uh, uh, the op all four candidates were uh, so each all the different groups in Iran and outside of Iran had candidates in this election but they lost the election and after they lost the election well you saw what happened the people uh, your uh, your audience sees what happens where for a couple months the Western media was uh, uh, was trying to encourage uh, different uh, events in the country and this is I mean this has happened all throughout Africa uh, unfortunately you know we recently saw this in Bolivia um, where an elected president there was a military coup against an elected president who won an election uh, which was obvious that he won an election so unfortunately this is the way they behave I mean there's uh, nothing uh, we okay, could say other than so that. Thank you so very much for now for your time, and uh, I hope uh, I can have you again on this uh, program next episode. Okay, we have come to the end of this episode of the fact. Uh, I would like to thank all three of you for your participation and also your contributions to this subject today. Uh, I hope that we can have you again on this program on next episode. So, and goodbye.